What's up YouTubers? It's your girl Shannon from EV and Chill. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing kind of a size comparison of the EV6 versus the Tesla Model Y. Now I know these vehicles are cross shopped a lot, so I thought that would be the perfect video to make today. Also people, it is like real windy. I'm like eating my hair. I even popped my collar to try to block the wind from the microphone, so I hope it works. Although the pop collar look, it kind of reminded me of like circa 2004, 2006. Do you remember when everyone was like popping the collars of their polo? Um, but okay, okay, back to the vehicles. So since they are cross shopped a lot, I wanna do a comparison. Hopefully this video will be beneficial so you can see how much space is in the cargo area, the frunk, even in the cabin. So we're gonna get real scientific here. I have my handy dandy tape measure nearby. Uh, we're gonna get measurements. And I know you could technically get like more accurate measurements on Google. Uh, but for me, I'm more of a visual person. I wanna see like practicality wise, what can really fit in the cargo space or in the frunk. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. I have a few props, uh, some suitcases, a jogging stroller, which if you're a parent, you know how big and bulky those things are. And I have to note that even though these vehicles are cross shopped a lot, they're kind of in two different price points here. So let's take a look at these specs here because this is the Kia EV6 wind trim level with the tech package. That's gonna put you around $54,000. The Tesla on the other hand, it is the top trim level. It is the Model Y performance and that's gonna set you back about 72 Gs. But if you wanted to, you could almost go like a trim level down and get like the Model Y long range. That'd be about like 10 grand cheaper. But with that, you're still not getting the federal tax credit. So mm, I guess you'd have to figure out like what works best for like your family, your budget, your lifestyle. All those things come into play here. And that's why we're checking out the space we have in these vehicles. Uh, but before we check out the space, I have to show you guys something I'm so excited about. These just came in the mail. Okay, ah, here they are. Our new personalized license plates. Uh, EV and chill. EV and chill too. I love it. Okay, if you are in the Northern Virginia area and you see us driving around, give us a little honk, let us know what's up. Also people, I still can't get over the whole Christmas scene here. I think it's real cute. Although we didn't do it on purpose, I always wanted a Tesla in red and the matte wrap just looks like fire. And then the EV6, we had to go with that emerald green. I call it more of a British racing green. It makes me sound like faster. Uh, the British racing green wrap, still loving that. It looks amazing. Let's get to space. Uh, let's open up this badonkadonk and see how much room there is inside. Let's start off seeing how big the cargo area is by first measuring them. So let's check lengthwise and then we'll check widthwise. And I have the second row seat up. We're going to do that in each vehicle. And this one to the latch comes right in at 39 inches. Now let's check widthwise and I'm going to measure in two locations. One, we're going to do the narrowest part of the vehicle. Uh, so where the wheel well comes in to the other side. And then there is a wider part right here. So let's measure that also and we'll see how big it is. So the narrowest part of the vehicle comes in right under 41 inches there. Now let's check the wider part. And now the wider part of the vehicle that comes in right over 46 inches there. Uh, so definitely again, a very fair amount of space. But for me, I'm visual. I wanna see what that looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna load in some suitcases and then a jogging stroller. And here we have an extra large suitcase, a carry-on suitcase and the Bob jogging stroller. And we've even got some extra room on the sides here. Uh, so very impressive, but let's make sure it can close. The true test right here. And we have touched down. So that is definitely a lot of space. I hope that helps you mentally like it helps me, but we're not done there people because this is an EV. It doesn't have an engine, it's got an electric motor. That means there's no need for an exhaust. So that means we get to use the sub trunk. So let's see what that'll hold. Now to access the sub trunk, we just pull this lever, but it kind of acts like two sub trunks in a way. Uh, so you lift this up and you can access the first compartment. And here we've got a few things, our tire kit, our vehicle to load connector. Now to access the back portion of it, uh, we actually have to move it forward uh, so it doesn't get stuck in the corners there. And then we are able to lift it up and access the back. So the back portion here, again, it's like the same level as the front. Uh, you can store just a little bit more in there. 
We've got some extra charging cables in here. So it's a decent amount of space where you can definitely make use of it. Uh, but again, you have to store pretty shallow items under here, maybe like a first aid kit or something like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's compare this space uh, to that in the Model Y. All right, and lengthwise with the second row seats up, we are looking at a measurement of about 43 inches right here uh, to the end where the latch is. Now let's take a look and let's do widthwise and we'll do narrowest part to narrowest part. And that comes in right at 37 and a half inches. Now let's check widest part to widest part. And that looks like we are coming in right at 63 inches. So that's pretty impressive. That's pretty wide and pretty long. And just like how the EV6 had a little cutout on the side, this has cutouts too, but they're kind of more like pockets. Uh, you can see down here, this is where we store extra diapers and bags, uh, very convenient. On this side, we have some toys and uh, what I like to call some mama juice. Uh, the side pocket can fit four bottles of wine. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. But now let's do our practical application and let's put all our luggage in. Now we've got our extra large suitcase, our carry-on, our jogging stroller. We have some more room on the sides here. And even though the Tesla is a little bit longer than the EV6, I feel like it should definitely shut. But let's go ahead and make sure. And we have success. So that's very exciting news. Let's check out the sub trunk. The sub trunk in the Tesla, it's kind of a dual sub trunk here. So the first one, incredibly deep. That is very, very impressive. Let's actually add a carry-on suitcase in here. Make sure it shuts. And just like that, the cargo space went from carrying two suitcases to three. That's awesome. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the secondary sub trunk, uh, which is a little bit more shallow, but still holds a lot. In this area, we've got our vacuum, air pump, umbrella. We have uh, charging cables right there. So definitely a lot of space back here. Now let's go look at the frunks. Now it's time to get frunky and let's take a look at what I've got under my hood. <laughs> uh, opening it up, you can see there is ample amount of space in here. Uh, actually very impressive with how deep this is. Uh, I'm always impressed with how deep things can go. Uh, but what we use our frunk for primarily, honestly, is like takeout because we don't want our cabin to like be really smelly. I mean, curry is great the day you eat it, but like two days later, I don't want to be smelling it. So that's what we use our frunk for. But just for size comparison here, let me show you this carry-on suitcase will fit right inside of here, just like that. And let's close it up. And we've got a little bit of room still on the sides, but let's make sure it shuts. Boom, just like that. Now I think technically the Tesla will be able to have the extra large suitcase. It had the carry on that we put in the cargo space in the sub trunk and now in the frunk. That is four suitcases, people. That is real impressive. Now take a walk with me as we go over to the Green Lantern and let's look at this frunk. I'm not gonna lie to you people. I'm gonna tell you right now, it was a little disappointing for me. Let me show you. Technically it counts because there is one there, but this is it. This is the frunk. It kind of looks like a little lunchbox to me. But if you open it up, it's just a weirdly shaped design. I mean, look at this. There's this small lower level here, and then there's like this upper shelf. I wish it was almost at least like the size of the lower shelf all the way across. But just for size reference, since we have the suitcase here, let's do it. Let me show you how silly this is gonna look. Okay, frunk, 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 that's crazy. Okay, putting this carry on right here, that looks redonkulous, people. That looks crazy. But again, just a good visual to show you, one vehicle can hold, one can't. Okay, so this is what I'm currently using uh, the frunk for in the EV6. Uh, I do have these little snacks that we carry around uh, for J3, but also for me, because sometimes I get hangry. Those fit nicely right here. And then we carry around some extra charging cables uh, and they actually do fit in here. It kind of overhangs on the shelf, but technically it still closes, but it kind of works. So that's what we're using the frunk for in the EV6. Um, again, I wish they could have done something a little bit different, but again, they do still have it. So I'm giving them a little bit of props. Jumping in the back of the Green Lantern, I really like that it feels kind of open in here. It's very spacious, it's roomy. I'm gonna show you my leg room in just a second. 
but kind of just a first impression real quickly is that it is really light and I really like that. I think that's partially attributed to the light color that we chose. We went with like this charcoal color, misty gray. It's kind of this two-tone color and I really, really like that. However, it doesn't seem as open and airy as it could. And I think that's partially because there is no glass roof at all. And this is super interesting. The EV6, it does not have a glass roof option on any of its trim levels. Now the GT, you could get a sunroof on it, uh, but the full glass roof, again, not available. Back to legroom, let's take a look here. I have my handy dandy tape measure. Now I have put the driver's seat where I normally sit in a vehicle. In comparison, it is pretty close to the steering wheel compared to the passenger seat, but I do have kind of shorter legs. I'm 5'4". Uh, I practically sit on the steering wheel when I drive. <laughs> uh, but let's take a look at the legroom here and let me give you a more finite number. And I'm just gonna go from my kneecaps to the back of the seat. And that is about 15 inches right there. Do you see that? That's pretty impressive. That's a lot of space. Okay, now let's check headroom in my super scientific way. We have about this much space, which kind of equates to about four and a half inches. Uh, now something, again, this doesn't really have to do much with like cargo size or anything like that. But one thing I really like about the EV6 is the design of the two front seats, the driver and the passenger seat. They kind of have this little notch here you can see on the side. Um, I feel like that's perfect for grabbing, for getting in and out of our vehicle. Uh, I like that look. But one kind of con of the vehicle when it comes to space, and my husband has pointed this out when he rides in the back, is the fact that if you were to slide your feet, if you have longer legs, and you were to slide your feet underneath, uh, there's not as much space under the driver's and passenger seat as he wishes there could be. Nothing that would be a deal breaker by any means, but just something to take note of. And another cool thing about the Green Lantern is that the back seats do recline. Uh, they don't go all the way flat, unfortunately, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. But you can still make things work. But it has this little lever right here. And if you pull that lever, uh, take a look, the seats go back. Uh, in comparison, I'll show you how far back they go here. Uh, so you do get enough. I mean, that's definitely further than like you would be able to recline in an airplane seat, right? The airplane seats are jokes. You recline this much. And then they have you put them in an upright position for a landing. People, I'm literally moving like a centimeter. Okay, ridiculous. Anyways, let's hop up front and take a look at the space there. As you'll see in a second, the space in the Green Lantern versus Red Light District is very different. And not necessarily bad where one is better than the other, uh, but just different. So take a look at what I mean. And also take a second to better enjoy this two-tone color here. It is beautiful. Okay, but taking a look again at space, uh, what I do like here about the EV6 is that it has this kind of cutout here uh, down in this lower area. This again, I think this is good for maybe takeout food. I fit my purse in there. That's a really nice area. But when we come up to this top area, there's a little bit less space. So we do have, again, two cup holders. Let's open up this console. And we do have a little cutout here. I don't know what that's for, maybe mints or change. I mean, do we still carry change today? Although you could put your change in this area here. This is a little shallow compartment. And then if you remove this, it does go significantly deeper. And even though this console does go pretty deep, it's not crazy wide. I think there is a fair amount of space up here. Uh, and legroom wise, the seat goes back a whole lot. The seat goes forward a whole lot. Um, so there's plenty of leg room, there's plenty of body room. All right, now let's take a look at Red Light District. The first thing I notice when I sit in Red Light District is again how open and airy it is. Kind of like the EV6, but I do have to say that I just feel a little bit more open and airy in the Tesla. And again, I'm going to contribute that to again the super bright white seats, uh, which again the EV6 has lighter seats but I think the difference is primarily in the glass roof. This glass roof, it lets in so much light, and I think that is what makes a huge difference. And even window-wise, I do feel like there is just a hair more visibility uh, sitting in the Tesla than there was in the back seat of the EV6. Again, not a deal breaker by any means, um, but you do just feel like that much more open and airy in the Tesla. Let's compare our leg room and take a look with me here, people. Uh, I mean, that looks pretty significant. And again, I've put my driver's seat where I would normally position it. And dang, 11 inches. 
So there is more leg room in the EV6, at least for me and how I drive. Let's take a look and let's compare this headroom in our very scientific way. And we are looking at just over six inches. Um, so a little bit more headroom in the Tesla, a little bit less leg room the way I drive and sit than the EV6. Now, even though the Tesla does not have anything to grab on up here, it does have an elevated driver seat and passenger seat. Uh, you can see there is plenty of leg room under here. You can slide your feet under there, no problem. And the seats recline in the Tesla too. So going from my upright position back, Okay, we definitely reclined more in the Tesla. Uh, you can kind of see it here. And even this seat could be a little bit more upright. Uh, so that's really cool. Now let's hop up front and check out the room up there. Sitting in the driver's seat of the Tesla, there's still ample storage space here, but again, it's just different than the storage space in the Green Lantern. Take a look and you'll see what I mean. So I do wish there was just an easy access tray like Kia had um, with their lower tray here. However, Tesla just does a different design. I do like that there is a designated phone place right here, uh, just right in the front. That's really convenient. But if you look here, they just have different compartments. Uh, so here we've got two different compartments, but if you remove the tray, then you're able to access the inside of here and you can store more stuff there. We've got two cup holders and then we have a console. And if you open this up, similar to how the Kia is, it had a shallow tray and then things go a little bit deeper there. So again, both vehicles, um, I do feel like they maximize storage in the front. They just do it differently. I mean, the Tesla was a little bit longer in the cargo area, but like you saw in the Green Lantern, there was more leg room. So it's kind of a toss up. I guess what it really boils down to is what's a better fit for you, your lifestyle, your family, and your price point. Both are really great vehicles, and again, both offer a lot of storage. Well, that's all I've got for this video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you've already done that, then do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. It helps with that whole YouTube algorithm thing. Well, that's all we've got for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. What'd you say? Okay.